Hi everyone and welcome to this lecture on how to use your calculator. This lecture is just going to go through some basic functions that we use on our scientific calculator in order to use it for our engineering calculations in an electronic circuit. The calculator that I'll be using is just on my Mac which is called pCalc. But hopefully you can have a bit of a look at this and see that the, the functions and the operations that we have on this thing is very similar to any other handheld calculator that you may have. Just another thing to note is if you've got an, a smartphone like an iPhone or an Android, you can also download free scientific calculator apps which should look very similar to this. Now, if you remember from the last tutorial, we had an electronic circuit that looked very similar to this. So we had what was called the voltage applied. That was the power supply. And then we had the resistance in the circuit, which I called R1. Then I had a 1 volt um, applied voltage, and we started off with a 1 ohm res of resistance. So if we start to actually punch this into the calculator in order to get, and I'll just draw this up, VIR, which is our Ohm's Law triangle, in order to get current, you'll recall that current equals voltage divided by resistance. Voltage is 1 volt, resistance is 1 ohm. Therefore, let's use our calculator to see what the answer is. 1 volt divided by 1 ohm and as you guessed it is 1 amp. So very simple. But what if we start to mix up these values a bit to something that's going to give us a bit of a more difficult to understand answer. Well let's have a look. Draw up our circuit again. Voltage applied. Let's make it 12 volts now. So something like a car battery. The resistance, let's say we've got 3200 ohms. Now, just to note with this, 3,200 ohms can be written in a more simple term, or a more simple way. We can actually write it as 3.2 K ohms. So the K represents thousands. So if we have a look at this little table that I've drawn up, we've got times 10 to the 0, which is the base unit, and we'll get into the exponent function in a second, which is the times 10. But if you have a look at this one, times 10 to the 3 is kilo. So times 10 to the 3 is actually giving us times 1,000. If you look at the next one up, we've got times 10 to the 6, which is giving you million, and we call that mega. We can actually go below the base unit. For example, if we're dealing with centimeters, um, you go below centimeters, you get to millimeters, and then you can get to micrometers and nanometers. In fact, you may have heard of nanotechnology um, in terms of uh, integrated circuit chips. The nanotechnology means that they've got those little transistors on those chips so small they're actually in the nanometer um, range. So they're very, very tiny. So we'll go through a few examples here and we'll hopefully uh, get a good grounding on what we're talking about in this table and how we can apply it to our calculator. So for this particular circuit, I want to know how much current is flowing. I've got a 12 volt power supply, a 3200 ohm resistor, or in other words, a 3.2 K ohm resistor. Let's put it into the calculator. And the first one we'll do is current equals voltage divided by resistance is 12 volts divided by, and we'll start with 3,200 ohms. And we'll see what that gives us. 12 volts divided by 3,200 ohms. And we get 0 0.00375. So that's a little more awkward to write than just this one amp. But let's write it down. 0 0.00375. And that's in amps. So we would say for this circuit, well, we have 0 0.00375 amps. But it doesn't really read too nice. So let's see a different way that we could have a look at it. On your calculator, or on a lot of calculators, there's a button that says ENG, which is for engineering notation engineering notation on your calculator is going to format the answer so it fits into one of these. So it would fit it into kilo or mega if it's above the base unit or milli, micro, nano, pico if it's below. For all of our lectures we won't be going outside any of these. However you can get times 10 to the 9 which is going to be getting into giga for example like gigabytes or gigahertz and you can even go above that and you can even go below pico. But for now we'll deal with just these. So, for my particular calculator, it doesn't have a button here. What I have to do is go Edit, Display, Engineering Notation. 
So now this is, I, I believe, a lot easier to actually look at. And in fact, I've pressed a button and just messed it up. So let's try it again. 12 volts divided by 3,200 ohms. Again, it's, it's defaulting to engineering notation, but on some calculators, you'll always have to press the ENG button um, after every calculation to convert it to this. So it's telling me that I'm getting 3.75, and then it's got this little negative 3 here. That negative 3 actually lines up with this. It's actually meaning 3.75 times 10 to the negative 3. So the times 10 to the negative 3 just means, well, we want to move the decimal place three spaces to the left in this case. So if we move it three spaces to the left, so just let me draw this up, 3.75, so we're going to need to put a whole heap of zeros over here. The times 10 to the negative 3 means move this 1, 2, 3, and that's your actual answer. So we should get rid of that decimal place right there. So it's actually 0 0.00375, which is exactly as well what we came up with down here. But the good thing we're doing it with engineering notation is this. We can look at this answer and realize that the negative 3 just tells us to think in our head of milli. If it was negative 6, we'd say micro. If it was negative 9, it'd be nano, negative 12, pico. So in this case, I would look at my calculator and say, well, that is 3.75 milli, and because it's current, it's amps. So let's write that down equals 3.75 milliamps. All right, let's do another example. I'll move this out of the way just a little bit. Get a different color. Let's draw up another one. Let's say we've now got 18 volts. That's our applied voltage. The resistance over here can be 5,300 ohms. Hopefully you can see another way of writing this is 5, my mistake, 5.3k ohms. How would we put it into the calculator? Well, to get current, we need voltage divided by resistance. Voltage is 18 volts. Resistance is now 5.3, oops, I'm trying to write small here, 5.3k. Bringing up the calculator, <clears throat> instead of writing in the 5,300 ohms, we'll actually write this one in, in engineering notation, using the exponential button over here. The exponential button means times 10. So what we're going to do is 18 volts divided by, and now we need to do the 5.3k. So to write that in, we could do 5,300. So that would certainly work. However, we don't want to do that. We want to go 18 divided by 5.3, and we want to do k, so we do exponential 3 to get k, equals, and this is giving me engineering notation, which is 3.396, and so forth, but notice how it's got the negative 3. Do you remember what the negative 3 means? Well, it means milli. Now, one last thing that I want to tell you with this is we're going to round all of our answers to two decimal places because that gives us a pretty good degree of accuracy. We don't need all these other numbers. So I would round this to, we've got 3.396. So if we want to round it to two decimal places, that six would round this nine up to, in this case, a zero, which would round the three up to a four. So in this case, we'd get 3.3 milli. Three point, sorry, it'd be 3.4 milli. And since it's current, it's milli amps. All right, how about another example? <clears throat> here's a circuit, here's a resistor. Let's say we've got 1.2 volts, so like a, a, um, a rechargeable battery, commonly a, a 1.2 volts for a AA battery. Let's say the resistance that we have for this circuit is going to be 2.2 K ohms. Let's get our formula. So current equals voltage divided by resistance. The voltage is 1.2 volts. The resistance is 2.2 K ohms. Bring up the calculator. We've got 1.2. We want to divide that by 2.2 and it's K. So we do the exponential button 
and 3 to get k equals so 545.45 and then recurring all the way through but now it's got negative 6 hopefully you remember the negative 6 is micro so negative 3 is milli negative 6 is micro negative 9 is nano negative 12 is pico so let's write this in 545.45 545.45 0.45 microamps. Okay, one last calculation that I want to do for you here is let's pretend that we had a circuit like this one. We didn't know what this resistance was. But we do know a couple of things about it. We do know that the power supply is, let's just go with 10 volts for this one, and we do know that the current in the circuit, IT, and this is VA by the way, voltage applied, Let's say that IT is going to be, um, let's go something pretty low. Let's go 480 nanoamps. So very, very, very small amount of current. Therefore, this resistance must be really, really big. But how do we get resistance? Let's draw up our Ohm's Law triangle. Voltage, current, resistance. We want to figure out resistance. Therefore, in order to get that, it's voltage divided by current. So resistance is voltage divided by current. The voltage is 10 volts. The current is 480 nanoamps. So just for your reference here, let's go back. Nano is times 10 to the negative 9. So when we put this into the calculator, we're going to do it this way. 10 volts divided by 480. And it's nano, so we have to do the exponential button and nano is negative 9. So to get that negative, we don't use this negative button, we need to use the change sign button. So if you notice, every time I press this, it changes the little sign up there. So 480 nano, so 480 exponential, change sign to get negative 9. So there is my 480 nano amps. Equals 20.83, and then we've got a 6 coming up here. So let's write that in. 20.83 and notice how it's a positive 6 we don't have a negative there so that means if we come over here positive 6 is mega so that value of resistance must be 20.83 meg ohms or 20.83 million ohms all right so that's it for this one hopefully you get a bit of an understanding of what we're doing with our circuit calculations and we're going to be using this grounding for all of these circuits coming up. Um, in fact, the very next lecture is going to be dealing with these. Thank you for watching. There's going to be some homework questions on this, so give them a go, and hopefully you pass them all. See you next time.